In this video, I'm going to go through a bunch of examples uh, using the material we've learned so far in probability. Uh, so I'd highly recommend grabbing a piece of paper and trying each of these out. Um, and then I'm gonna go through each of the solutions step-by-step. Step. Um, so here are the problems. Number one, if you roll one die, what is the probability that it is a three or an even number? Two, suppose an experiment consists of rolling two dice. What is the probability that the first die is a four and the second is an even number? Three, suppose an experiment consists of rolling two dice. What is the probability that the first die is a four or the second die is an even number? And for those first three problems, uh, assume it's a six-sided die. Number four, suppose you are randomly selecting individuals and event A is that the subject is a college graduate and event B is that the subject is employed. Are these, so part A, are these mutually exclusive and why or why not? Part B, are these independent and why or why not? Number five, if you flip a coin four times, what is the probability that you get at least one tail? Number six, if you roll two eight-sided dice, what is the probability that neither of them is a three? And uh, finally, number seven, if you take two cards out of a standard deck of 52 cards without replacement, um, in other words, you take one out and take another one out without putting the first one back in or shuffling the first one back in, what is the probability that they are both jacks? And um, a 52 card deck has 13 cards of each type, um, but we're really taught end, uh, so there are Sorry, it has four cards of each type, so there are four jacks, for example, and 13 of each suit. Um, so try those problems out, pause, and we'll talk about them in a moment. All right, if you roll one die, what is the probability that it is a three or an even number? So probability that it is three or even. Um, so that's equal to the probability that you roll a three um, plus the probability that you roll an even number minus the probability that the die is simultaneously three and an even number uh, by the addition rule. So that's equal to the probability that you roll a three. One of the sides of the die is, die, die is a three out of the six sides plus probability that it's an even number. Uh, two, four, and six are even numbers, so that's three out of six minus the probability that the die is simultaneously three and an even number. Since three is not even, that's zero. So this is four out of six or two thirds um, or 0.66 repeating, or you could also round that to 0.667. Suppose an experiment consists of rolling two dice. What is the probability that the first die is a four and the second is an even number? So probability of four and that the second die is even. Um, this is equal to the probability that the first die is a four now times. So remember and or and then goes with multiplication, whereas or goes with addition times the probability that the second one is even. Um, you could say given that the first one was a four uh, because these are independent events, um, so these are independent, in other words, um, the outcome of one does not affect the probability of the other. Uh, this is equal to the probability the first die is a four times the probability that the second die is an even number, uh, because um, if we roll two dice, whatever happens in the first die has no effect on what happens in the second die. So the probability that the first die was a four, again, there's just one side that is a four out of the six sides, times the probability that the second is an even number, um, that's three out of six. And so we have three out of 36, uh, which you could reduce to being equal to 1 12th. And you could also write that as a decimal, and if you do, it's 0 0 uh, 0 0.0833 repeating, um, which you could you know, round uh, to 0.083. Okay, um, suppose an experiment consists of rolling two dice again. What is the probability that the first die is a four or the second is an even number? So that's the only difference between this problem and the previous. So um, again, two dice as opposed to our first problem with one die. Um, so probability that the first is a four or the second is even. I'm just gonna write E for even 
is equal to um, the probability that the first die is a 4 plus the probability that the second die is an even number minus the probability that both things are true, that the first die is a 4 and the second die is an even number. Um, and this is uh, the addition rule um, that, uh, that we covered earlier on. So this is the addition rule um, that in general or goes with addition. Okay, so um, the probability that the first die is a 4 is 1 out of 6. The probability that the second die is an even number is 3 out of 6, minus the probability that both things are true. This is the probability that the first die is a 4 and the second die is an even number. Um, well, we actually calculated that above. Um, so this is minus um, 1 12th is what we found. And so um, to be able to um, simplify those fractions, we need to get a common denominator. So we can multiply the numerator and the denominator of the other two fractions by 2. So 2 over 2, 2 over 2 to get a common denominator. And uh, what we've got is then um, 2 out of 12 plus 6 out of 12 minus 1 out of 12. We've got 7 twelfths. Um, so 7 twelfths is our probability. If we want, we can convert that to a decimal and we'd get 0.583 repeating. Uh, we could round that to 0.583. Okay, suppose you are randomly selecting individuals and event A is the event that the subject is a college graduate. Event B is the event that the subject is employed. And we're talking about um, in one individual, what is the probability that that person or uh, these two events for that one individual um, so are these mutually exclusive? Um, no, they are not mutually exclusive. Um, events A and B can occur simultaneously. So because both events A and B can occur at the same time, these events are not mutually exclusive. Um, are these events independent? Um, I would, uh, no. Um, so, in, so events are mutually exclusive if they um, cannot occur at the same time. These events can occur at the same time. We can select somebody who is both a college graduate and employed. Um, what does it mean to be independent? Um, two events are independent. Um, so A, B, independent if the probability of A given B is the same thing as the probability of A um, or the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. In other words, they're independent if the outcome of one event does not affect the probability of the other in any way. And so here the question is, um, if you had the extra information um, that the subject was employed, for example, would that at all affect the probability that the subject is a college graduate? Um, and in terms of just probability, uh, the answer is yes, this, this extra knowledge would affect that probability. So the probability that the subject is employed given that they are a college graduate is greater than the probability that someone is employed without any extra information. Um, and, um, you know, year to year, of course, the specific statistics change, um, but this has uh, historically been true as long as we've, you know, had uh, in this modern time of college graduates and such. Um, so, for example, um, um, in January 2020, um, we had um, that the um, unemployment rate uh, for college grads was 2%, whereas the unemployment rate for um, all, for everyone, was 3.6%. Um, so saying that in, ge um, in general, someone is more likely to be employed if they are a college graduate than if we have no information of, whether, of their educational attainment. Um, and again, those are just from one particular month, um, but um, the trend of that 
employment rate being greater for college graduates is consistent. Okay, if you flip a coin four times, what is the probability that you get at least one tail? So um, probability of at least one tail. So there's one way we could approach this, um, and we do have the tools to do it. It's a little bit difficult. We could say, okay, this is the probability of one tail plus the probability of two tails plus the probability of three tails plus the probability of four tails. Um, that would be one way to approach this problem, and it would take um, a lot more space than uh, what you see here. Um, another way we could approach this problem is to say that to use the complement, so this is equal to one minus the probability of the complement of that event. Um, so if we don't have at least one tail, how many tails do we have? We have zero tails. Um, so this is one minus the probability of no tails. Um, in other words, that's equal to one minus the probability of all heads. Um, and so that's equal to um, one minus, now the probability of four um, heads in four coin flips. So the probability of the first one, so let's just write that out, minus the probability of the first tail, first die being, sorry, the first coin being a head, and the second coin being a head, and the third coin being a head, and the fourth coin being a head. And again, multiplication, remember, goes with and or and then. Um, so this is equal to 1 minus 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. So that's 1 minus, and we multiply across the numerator, multiply across the denominator, 1 minus 1 sixteenth, that's 15 sixteenths. And um, if we um, get a decimal equivalent of that, that's equal to 0.9375. Okay, if you roll two eight-sided dice, what is the probability that neither of them is a three? So um, the probability uh, that neither is a three, um, that's equal to the probability that um, the first is not a three and, so times, the second is not a three. And um, again, die rolling is are, these are independent events, so uh, when we think about the second probability, we don't have to keep the first outcome in mind. Um, so this is equal to, um, this is an eight-sided die now, so there are seven values that are not threes out of the eight values times seven values that are not three out of the eight values, and so we've got um, 49 out of 64, um, which we is a fine to say as our probability, or we could convert that to a decimal, and if we do, that's 0.7656. Okay, last one. If you take two cards out of a standard deck of 52 cards without replacement, what is the probability that they are both jacks? Okay, so this is the probability the first card is a jack and the second card is a jack. That's equal to the probability that the first card is a jack times the probability that the second card is a jack given that we know that the first card was a jack. Um, so these events are not independent, so we do have to keep in mind the outcome of the first event when we calculate the probability of the second. So probability that the first card is a jack, there are four jacks out of our 52 cards, times probability that the first, second card is a jack given that the first one was as well. There are three jacks remaining in the deck out of the 51 cards that remain in the deck. And so we've got um, that answer. Uh, if we wish, we could convert that into a decimal. Um, remember, we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, so 12 divided by 52 times 51. Um, and this would give us 0 0.00452. Um, so this is um, a 0.4% chance.